Well, hello and welcome to the April edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. So each month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month and feature those in our What's in Bloom. So we're going to uh, go through those starting with A, which is Balea multiradiata. This is a desert daisy from the southwest that occurs in California, also in other southwestern states and in northwestern Mexico. So a lot of times in a desert landscape, we have prominent plants like the agaves or the yuccas or the uh, barrel cacti or whatnot, but the landscape is softened by the presence of uh, the desert wildflowers. And Balea multiradiata is a wonderful example with these brilliant yellow uh, daisy flowers and uh, the soft cut leaf uh, grayish foliage, uh, a wonderful desert Daisy. Alongside the Balea, uh, we have a cactus in bloom. Now that cactus would never be on what's in bloom because it is uh, too uh, short-lived of a flower. So the flower only lasts a few days. Uh, but this is an Echinopsis hybrid from South America, which is one of the plants that I hybridized. And uh, here it is with its beautiful uh, pinkish red flowers uh, putting on a show right now. So I just thought I'd point that out while we're here. Trichostema is a genus in the mint family, and this one here with the purple flowers is a hybrid called Trichostema Midnight Magic. Uh, we also have a, a red-flowered um, Hesperallo growing up through here too, but this purple one is the Trichostema. It's a, a, a shrub that lasts for a very long time and does really well in our climate here in California. Trichostema Midnight Magic. Next up we have Lobelia laxiflora, uh, notable for its long red tubular flowers with some yellow and orange at the mouth of the flower. Uh, very long blooming period all summer long and uh, long narrow green leaves. Uh, it's a, a short plant, maybe a couple feet high, uh, and really puts on a lot of flowers. Lobelia laxiflora. Next up we have a couple of aloes from South Africa. Uh, this short one here is Aloe Affinis, uh, and it's notable for its uh, wonderful dark leaves that have a sort of a reddish tinge to them, and it has bright red flowers. It's not quite in flower yet, uh, it's still at the bud stage, but it's well on the way. Probably a couple more days it'll open its first flowers. Uh, this is one of the aloes we refer to as the maculates, uh, related to Aloe maculata, and they have a swollen base of the flower. Uh, and they're quite widespread in the eastern part of South Africa. On a larger scale, here we have Aloe speciosa from southern South Africa, and it has buds that are a soft pink color and then changing to ivory white as they open with these uh, very dark stamens protruding from the mouth of the flower. So it sort of gives you a three-tone effect, Aloe speciosa. In this part of the garden, on the western side of the garden, we have a lot of California natives, and among them is this shrub, which is Justicia Californica Tecate Gold, uh, named for the golden color of the flowers. The species also comes in red and orange colored flowers, but this gold one is really putting on a show right now. Justicia Californica Tecate Gold. Grevillea is a large genus of Australian shrubs, a few trees too, but mostly shrubs, uh, in the Protea family. And uh, this is a hybrid here, uh, which is pretty spectacular right now, and that's Grevillea petrophylloides cultivar big bird. So these wonderful wands of flowers with uh, lavenders and pinks in them, and the very fine uh, green textured foliage to go with it. And at its foot, we have a wonderful California native, not in flower yet, uh, actually a Baja California native, and that is Dudleya brittoni, just starting to send up its stalks. It's not on what's in bloom, but it looks so wonderful that I thought I'd point that out too. Next we have another South African aloe, Aloe spicata, from the northeastern part of South Africa, and it has unbranched flower stalks that come out. There's two of them here on it right now and uh, the flowers are sessile. That means they have uh, no floral stem. So the flowers just come right off of the main stalk and are packed together in a cylinder like this. Uh, it works its way up from the bottom to the top and uh, in the middle of each flower, the flowers are like a cup, 
And in the middle of each flower is a dark eye of nectar. So this is very popular with sunbirds in South Africa who come and visit it to get the nectar. Aloe spicata. We saw one grevillea, grevillea petrophylloides, big bird, which has large wands of flowers that come out. And this is a very different looking grevillea. This is grevillea lavangulacea pinola. Cultivar name is pinola. And its flowers are little pink and white curly cues. Uh, this has been in cultivation for a lot longer and is a wonderful shrub for a dry garden uh, with lots and lots of flowers scattered throughout the bush. Agaves are commonly called century plants and they range from little tiny rosettes that you could hold in the cup of your hand all the way to gigantic uh, plants like the common century plant. Uh, this one sort of in between, uh, this is Agave Giesbrechtii. We have a few agaves in the United States, but most of them come from Mexico, and that's the case with this one, Giesbrechtii, which is from southern Mexico. And uh, so it makes a cluster of heads, and it really doesn't bloom very often, but here it is in full bloom right now with this wonderful stalk coming up and these amazing purple flowers with uh, a little yellow, a touch of yellow pollen to add to the mix. Uh, Agave Giesbrechtii. Aloes are notable for their spectacular flowers, and a lot of them have been hybridized uh, to combine traits from different species. And that's the case with this one here. So this is a cross between Aloe petricola from northeastern South Africa, and it has bicolored uh, racemes of flowers. In other words, the flower spike uh, changes color. So it's a darker, oranger color uh, as a bud, and then lightens up as it opens. And petricola has been crossed with aloe uh, ferox, which is a much larger aloe and more branch, so that gives us more floral branches and a bigger size, but with the flower of the petricola. It's a really very attractive cross and uh, in full bloom right now, aloe petricola x ferox. Like the aloes, uh, the pelargoniums have been hybridized a great deal. These are plants that are commonly called geraniums in the nursery trade, uh, but they're in the genus pelargonium. It is in the geranium family, but the genus is pelargonium, and uh, this is one of the lemon-scented ones. You, when you brush the foliage, it has a wonderful fragrance to it, and these beautiful pink flowers with dark red markings on them, and uh, just beginning to flower now, starting to look pretty good, and a lot more flowers to come. A pelargonium hybrid with lemon-scented leaves. The daisy family is a very large family found all around the world. Uh, and here we have an example from the Canary Islands. This is Sonchus palmensis. So it grows uh, a little bit on the tall side with these uh, cut leaves, very attractive leaves, and large umbrella-like clusters of yellow flowers. Uh, it's named after the island of La Palma in the Canary Islands, Sonchus palmensis. This aloe here is aloe striata. Uh, it's a rather commonly grown plant here in California. A uh, South African native, and it has stemless rosettes of leaves with no teeth on the edge, but a wonderful uh, coral or orange border on the leaf, and then these umbrellas of orange flowers. Uh, it has a big distribution in the southern part of South Africa and grows very well here in California as well. The name striata means striped, and while there are stripes on the leaves, they're rather subtle, and it maybe is not the best choice of a name, but that's the name it was given, Aloe striata. This shrub is Polygola virgata from South Africa. Uh, it's in its own family, Polygolaceae. The flowers do look quite pea-like, and people oftentimes think it's a member of the pea family, but it isn't. It's the Polygolaceae, and uh, it has uh, rather sparse foliage, uh, makes a shrub up to five or six feet tall, and then lots and lots of purple flowers in the springtime. So it's just getting going now, Polygola virgata. I mentioned that Mexico has many species of agave, and one of the delightful ones from northwestern Mexico is this plant, agave colorata. It comes from the state of Sonora, uh, only found in Sonora, and uh, here it is coming into flower. The flower stalk's not very tall for an agave. It arches to the side a little bit and has clusters of flowers. Uh, they're not quite open yet, it's still at the bud stage. But this uh, dramatic stalk has come out over the last month and it's uh, just about to begin blooming. Agave colorata. Euphorbia is a very large and diverse genus. Uh, some of the plants are garden weeds, some of them are trees. 
but some of them are, are cactus-like and, and quite wonderful to cultivate. And that's the case with this one, Euphorbia polygona variety Nivea. Uh, it's sometimes called Euphorbia horida variety, um, but uh, now horida has been subsumed into uh, Euphorbia polygona, so we're calling it Euphorbia polygona variety Nivea. Uh, notable for its milky uh, pale stems and its dark purple flowers, which are teeny tiny little flowers up at the tip of the plant. And you really have to look closely to see the flowers, uh, but it makes a cluster of cylindrical stems over time and can become many-headed over the years. Euphorbia polygona variety Nivea. You might see this plant sometimes referred to as Euphorbia snowflake. That's a cultivar name for it. That's the same thing. Uh, next to it, we have a wonderful aloe, and this is aloe claviflora. It just opened its first flower today. It's a compact uh, aloe from the interior of South Africa with these flowers that come out obliquely with many, many flowers packed along the stem, and just beginning now, aloe claviflora. Bulbine is a genus in the asphodel family, the same family that has the aloes in it, and uh, most of the bulbines have yellow flowers, as this one does, and they have a wonderful characteristic that they have fuzzy stamens, look like little tiny feather boas. And uh, this one we don't have a name on. It comes from the Tanqua Karoo, which is an inland uh, winter rainfall area in the west of South Africa, quite a dry area. And uh, we grew it from seed, and it's really doing well, sending up flower stalk after flower stalk. Uh, it's got uh, one that's already done, some that are in flower now, and another one on the way. Uh, a bulbine species from the Tanqua Karoo. A little bit earlier we saw an aloe that was a hybrid between aloe petricola and aloe ferox. Uh, this is another petricola hybrid, and again you have the two-tone uh, flower spikes. This one is Excelsa ex petricola. So once again, we've taken the modest-sized petricola and crossed it with a larger species, in this case aloe Excelsa, to get more floral branches and a larger sized plant. Uh, it's, in this case, a red and white bicolor. Uh, makes a very striking effect in the garden. Aloe excelsa ex petricola. Grevillea is a genus in the uh, Protea family from Australia, and we've seen a couple of them in this month's Western Bloom. And here's another one, Grevillea King's Fire. It comes from Western Australia and makes a large shrub, as you can see here, and just incredible amounts of flowers. Almost every month of the year we have flowers on this plant. Uh, the uh, flower wands come out like, uh, like little uh, brushes and they begin flowering at the base and then work their way outward with these uh, long curling styles that stick out from the flower cluster. Very attractive to bees and you uh, don't have to stand here long before you see bees flying up to visit the flowers. Uh, it's relatively new to cultivation and uh, has done very well for us. Grevillea King's Fire. We thought we'd throw in a bonus cactus with this month's uh, What's in Bloom, and this is Lobivia formosa from the Andes in northwestern Argentina. Uh, it's a very large growing plant for a Lobivia. It has a, a complicated taxonomic history, having been first in Sorensia and then moved into Trichocereus and then into Echinopsis and now finally Lobivia. Uh, it is very large for a Lobivia. Uh, but with these spectacular yellow flowers coming out now in April. Lobivia formosa. Another genus that there's a lot of examples of from Australia is eucalyptus. So this is in the myrtle family, and uh, many of them are trees, but some of them are shrubs too, and that's the case with this one, Eucalyptus priciana. Uh, has these uh, blue-gray uh, or, or blue-green uh, leaves, and uh, wonderful yellow flowers. So it's uh, really flowering away right now. It's called the bell-fruited mallee. A mallee is a Australian word for a eucalyptus. And the bell-fruited part is because it has these, uh, after the flowers have gone by, these uh, nuts or fruits that are in the shape of a bell. Uh, it never gets to be a tree, stays a shrub. This has been in the garden for many, many years and always bursts out with yellow flowers at this time of the year. Eucalyptus priciana. And one last thing to make note of, at the base of the eucalyptus is a species tulip. This is Tulipa saxatilis, 
and uh, it has pink flowers with a, a yellow center and uh, we've got a quite a, a good patch of it here and uh, really blooming its heart out right now. That brings us to the end of the April What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. But remember that there's always other things that have uh, shorter flowering periods that don't make it onto the What's in Bloom list. So come to the garden and check it out. There's always something going on.